We are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk, 1180-1230-KGEO, 1410-KERI, 1000-KKIM in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and now three times a week on the Internet nationwide through knookmedia.com. So, Clay, what do you think of Congressman uh, John LeBoutier? I've always liked John. He's been a great guest on the yeah, show several he, he's times. He's been fun for us. So he, he, it's, it's been Very a, knowledgeable, too. Yes, pleasure having him on. But now by phone, we've got a man I've been waiting a long time to interview. He's the author of a great new book I highly, highly recommend, Blue Collar Conservatives, Recommitting to an America That Works. Imagine that. The former senator from the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Rick Santorum. Senator, welcome to Taking Care of Business. Well, thank you, gentlemen. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be on. I'm uh, looking forward to the interview. It, uh, uh, I, you said it's a great read, but you have to admit you're not reading it, right? Actually, you, you can read, though, right? I, I was worried about that. Well, you, I don't know. There's a lot of pictures, you know, and that's that's good for Clay. <laughs> and, and, and for me, the listening is what I have to do. But, you know, you don't have to start out the interview by, by calling us gentlemen. We didn't insult you at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm looking forward. I've, I've heard a lot of fun things about you guys. I'm looking forward to talking to you. All right, before we get started, I want to lob a softball question. You there? I'm here. Okay. I don't know if you know the answer to this, but are there golf courses in Afghanistan? <laughs> uh, it, it, the, the, uh, the answer is, uh, I suspect, yes, but I, I, I can't imagine uh, that they, they would be a lot of fun to play right now. Well, I, I was wondering because Obama went to Afghanistan last week, and I knew there but had there to must, be a golf there course. There must be a golf course nearby. Exactly, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Do, I, do I notice a tinge of sarcasm from the two of you? Well, <laughs> well we started out with sarcasm, so we might as well just stay with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go with <laughs> If it works, why quit? Yeah. <laughs> well... Senator, as I say, I really, really enjoy listening to your book. And Thank you. And one of the themes that, that you, you seem to hit in this book is that the GOP is out of touch. Can you elaborate on that? Well, I mean, I just think we, we are not understanding who our voters are and where America's headed. And, uh, you know, that we, we are, that the fight within the Republican Party right now really is a, a fight that, uh, I think misses the mark. Uh, you have you have a bunch of people who are establishment Republicans who uh, who are trying to move this party and move the conservative movement away from the core principles of American of America and what made us a great country. Uh, all because they think, well, the country's moving, the culture's changed, everything changes, so we have to change too. Instead of understanding that they, yes, the culture is changing, but there's a lot of people who are, and the country is changing, the economy is changing, but there's a lot of people being left behind and, and being left out. Uh, and they're very fearful and, and anxious about these changes, and they they believe and they know that what made America great, the values and principles, will work again, and, and they want someone to stand up and fight for them. And the Republican Party, instead of standing and fighting, is fighting among themselves and trying to figure out where to go instead of you know, sticking by what, you know, the, the, the concepts of work and the concepts of limited government and family, faith, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, it, Education that, that provides skills training for everybody. Those are the kinds of things that that I think we need to be talking about and focused on if we're going to be successful as a part. Well, you know, the the other part of that 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 you touched on is how the Republican Party's message is alienating, and, and it sometimes feels like it's irrelevant to a lot of Americans. Yeah, I and mean, if you look at what the economic message is for Republicans, it's been balance the budget, cut taxes for high income individuals, and cut benefits for lower income individuals. Well, if you're a big swath of America who's not either high income or low income and doesn't understand, frankly, that I don't even understand how a balanced budget is going to help me get a better job or help, uh, or, or, you know, gain inflation or whatever the case may be and affect my life personally, then, then you're in a situation where you're, you're talking to nobody. You're talking to you know, you're the, the vast majority of people who have no idea what your economic message means to them and why it's going to make their their chance of the American dream better. And we have to begin to tailor our message, not just to be all about growth. And I'm a pro-growth guy. I believe in lower taxes. I believe in in, in, uh, in doing things to let the free market uh, you know, produce jobs. But I also want to make sure that we have a pro-worker party, that we're out there making sure that families can, can get jobs to provide for themselves and, and their families. We're having a conversation with former Senator Rick Santoro. You know, Senator, you espoused earlier some of the, uh, what sounded like the Tea Party mantra. And yet, I wonder, what is it that the Republican Party has against the Tea Party? 
Well, this Republican doesn't have anything against the Tea Party. And in fact, you know, I'm going around endorsing all sorts of candidates this time around, and they're very much associated with the Tea Party, and frankly, having a fair amount of success doing so. I mean, I think the media is not really talking about. Uh, you know, they had some great wins last night in uh, in the state. Of, well, Tuesday night in the state of Texas, uh, with Tea Party candidates sweeping all over the place. So there's there's still there's still a lot of uh, a lot of energy out there for folks who want to. Uh, make sure that we don't abandon what made America the greatest country in the history of the world, and uh, and I think there's, you know, there's the I to go back to the establishment who, who unfortunately uh, live and work in these in in, in areas and communities that um, whose values have changed and the culture has changed. You look across America and you see in uh, election time and you see all these counties and you think that. You know, if the red counties versus the blue counties, you think that the United States of America was an overwhelmingly conservative and Republican country. Right. Uh, there's only deep patches of blue, many of them in California, but but along the coast uh, that that uh, that dictate elections. Well, unfortunately, that's where that's where the establishment Republicans live. That's where the donors of the Republican Party live. They live in these deep blue areas, and as a result of that, they tend to think that well, that's that's where America is. That's where where the party needs to go if we're going to be successful, and that's just wrong. We need to understand that our our strength is in the uh, in the core values of Middle America, and we need to we need to resonate with them and talk to them, not just in terms of economic policy, but how we're going to help them, particularly uh, to rise in society again. You know, Senator, looking at again looking at uh, something else you said in your book. You made the comment that you think we're we're perilously close to losing our freedom. What did you mean by that statement? Well, if you look at the ever big encroachment of government, I mean, this is something that uh, I think everyone's beginning to uh, come to terms with. Uh, that you, you see religious freedom and at, at the core of being uh, being eroded away with government dictating you uh, that how you how you have to live your life and. Uh, you know, the Obamacare is probably first and foremost among them, just saying, you know, we're, we're going to give you this health care plan, and then we're going to tell you uh, how you're going to, uh, you know, what benefits you're going to have and what you're going to pay for. And if, if you have a conscious objection to it, too bad. This is, this is you know, this is, uh, government's going to give you a right. They're going to tell you how to exercise those rights. And, uh, you know, you look at that, you look at the, uh, uh, what's going on in, just in, in the state of California, which, with, with, with people who have paid a price for standing up for marriage, standing up for their religious condition. So you're, you're seeing this more and more from the left, that they do not tolerate dissent. They don't tolerate any diversity of opinion uh, when they can turn that diversity of opinion bigoted or hateful. Uh, so someone who disagrees with you, uh, who's held a position that may have been a position that's been held in society for 200 years, all of a sudden it's now hate speech, and you have to be curbed, or you have to be punished, or you can't even have a job if you if you this you know, I wanted to ask you a question about the VA and Obamacare. Um, Obamacare, as you know, the, Obama doesn't like that name now that it, is, it has such a bad f- light. He'd prefer it be called the Affordable Care Act. But what's yeah. the difference between the VA and the future of Obamacare? Not much. I mean, if you really look at, at, at Obamacare, it, it or, it's oriented clearly toward a, a system that will the, the private sector system will collapse. I mean, there's there's no way that you can add uh, all of these benefits, all of these all of these patients, and uh, and and drive healthy people and wealthy people out of the system, which is what Obamacare is doing, and have a system that's going to function. It's it's Obamacare is going to collapse the private sector healthcare system, which of course the the antidote will be well see private sector doesn't work, and so we have to come up with a government system. Uh, and even if Obamacare would, for some reason, work, it is so prescriptive. It, is, it, it dictates almost everything. It, I don't know if you even know. I mean, there's, the insurance companies, for example, uh, in, uh, under Obamacare have there's something called a minimum loss ratio, which, which means that if you insure a, a business in America, you have to pay 85% of, your, of, of the premiums you receive as an insurance company out in benefits. So what does that mean? The government tells you how much money, not profits you can make. It's not a 15% profit. It's 15% that you can keep to run your business. And you have to make a profit off that 15%. So now the government is coming in. Imagine if the government came in and said, you know what, uh, uh, you know, the, the, you know uh, Walmart, 
you have to provide uh, 85% of, of, your, uh, of, of your sales have to be on the, only the value, the, the base value of the, uh, of the products you sell, and you get 15% to run your company, to add to your advertising, to the accounting, to the legal, to your employees, and make a profit. And you so know, imagine that, that, we're, that the government is coming in and dictating these types of things. It is a government-run system that the private sector is trying to administer, and it's going to fail. That's a little scary for uh, Clay and I since we're both in the insurance business. Uh, we'll be back in a moment on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.